today. Let's dive deeper into why James Cameron's Avatar 2 connects so well with audiences. The first thing that pops out is the 3D aspect of it. After all, James Cameron has seemingly found a way of creating intimacy with 3D. Now, in the last 10 years or so, the huge success of the first Avatar changed the way movie theaters around the world work. When it first came out, 3D was seen almost as a gimmick, but Cameron's use of the technology was a big reason for its success and why it's still used to this day. It was the excellent use of 3D that helped make the story and the world feel more personal. Love, I ask you to betray Jake Sully. I know you never do that. You're loyal. I admire loyalty. Many people have wondered if Avatar's success was just because of the way it used new technology, or if there was something else going on. For sure, a lot of the success of the Avatar movies can be attributed to the cutting-edge technology used in the performance, capture, and visual effects work. But there's also another reason why the franchise keeps resonating with people all over the world. Sustain. The tales oh. are weak. You'll be slow in the water. And that's because of the way Cameron and his cast and crew tell a heartfelt and familiar story in an otherworldly setting. People have talked a lot about the cultural impact of this movie. But when you go see Avatar, one of the most successful parts of the movie is how it uses otherworldly settings to show familiar themes. Apart from the themes, we really have to give credit to another thing, the Way of Water story. After all, it may be simple, but it works in the most beautiful way. I mean, there's something to be said for how Cameron and his writing team have kept the movies from being fake like many other movies. People who keep saying that the story is either cliche or too simple aren't necessarily being as harsh as they might think. Let me out of here! Gallop your dick, they look pill! Your way of ah! A simple story has a natural way of connecting with a lot of people. This is one of the main reasons why both Avatar and The Way of Water have been so successful for so long. One of the most common complaints about The Way of Water is how the body of the film is put together. In this part of the movie, the Sully family starts to get used to their new life in the water after the Metkayina clan accepts them. This part of the movie is mostly about the Sully family and how they learn to swim and adjust to their new life. At this point, the movie seems less like a major blockbuster and more like a movie about about friends hanging out. Watching these characters continue to connect with nature, just like their parents, is endearing in a way that most movies of this scope would overlook or ignore entirely. In reality, that part of the movie is one of the most important parts of the whole thing. Oh, Back off. No. <sighs> This is because it gives the audience a chance to connect with these new characters in a big way. Then what makes us connect with the characters is the brilliant dialogue in the movie. Hey. That's what the other guys look like. Worse. It's good. I love worse. In fact, the dialogue is so sincere that it makes character interactions more meaningful. Yep, another thing that stands out if you've seen any major movie in the past five or more years is that there isn't much witty dialogue when something important happens in the story. There always seems to be a sarcastic comment or tone on the other side of a serious line of dialogue. In The Way of Water, on the other hand, Cameron plays all the serious parts straight. That doesn't mean that the movie isn't funny. It just means that he lets the funny parts stand on their own, instead of relying on winks and nods to make people laugh. It's one of the many refreshing things about the movie, and it still stands out when you think about it. Cameron isn't afraid to let the kids in the way of water just be kids and mess around. There are also a few funny lines that might take you out of the story for a second, but they're so few and far between that they never get in the way. We think Cameron's sincere approach to showing how this family works is a great asset to the movie as a whole. Keeping all of this in mind, it doesn't come as a surprise that this movie has been doing so well at the box office. He scores me. Uh huh. Are you the all who's commandeering my ship? That would be me. Target's pretty much this. While we're happy for Cameron because his movie was able to do so well, it seems like the director himself has realized that he has evolved a lot after the success of Avatar 2. He has found the perfect balance between work and fun. Now, even though the first Avatar movie came out almost 13 years ago, the second installment has already made more than $2 billion around the world. Cameron walked down the red carpet at the Golden Globes and talked about how much he appreciated his fans and how excited he was for his movie to come out in theaters. 
the success is definitely exceeding our, our expectations and our minimum threshold for it all having been a, a gamble or an investment that was worth our time. James walked with his wife, Susie Amis, by his side and talked to Ola USA about how he has changed as a director since Titanic. When asked how he has changed as a director since the beginning of his career, the director said he has definitely become more zen. He said that before, he used to give up everything in his life for a movie, but he doesn't do that anymore. James also went on to say that he had finally found a good balance between his work and his personal life. On top of this, compared to his first projects, he took a different approach toward making movies, which has helped him get better at his craft as well. It seems like over the years, he has also realized when to take criticism seriously and when to just continue doing what he's passionate about. After all, it was kind of a shut up call for all critics when he opted to, despite all odds, direct The Way of Water. I mean, when the first Avatar came out, it got a lot of mixed reviews. Many people thought it wasn't very good, and they did not think the sequel would be any better. After the negative feedback, Cameron really thought about leaving filmmaking, even though he had made a long-term commitment to the Avatar franchise. You were one of us now. He said that engineering and physics were much more interesting to him because they don't involve opinions. It took them years to make a machine that can go in the ocean, and at the end of the day, it either works or it doesn't. Cameron definitely didn't hold back the sarcasm when he said that the second law of thermodynamics is not the opinion of some in his ideal world, James would rather explore the deep ocean with machines he made himself and knew would work. But as an artist, he knows that not everyone is going to like what he makes. It was for the big screen, you compose in scope composition and so on, you move the camera, you create a lot of detail, it still plays a video. It just doesn't work the other way around. In the end, Cameron chose to keep making movies. He thought that making more Avatar movies could be good for the conversation, our ideas about our role as guardians of nature, and also indigenous communities that are struggling to be heard, seen, and respected. Her name is Ra. She was my spirit sister. After the first film, James and the entire team thought they were doing something good. And this was simply because that film led to so many conversations. And uh, you okay? Yeah, great coast. Never better. Yeah. Shut up. These talks weren't only common amongst the real-life indigenous community, but also sustainability-minded leaders around the world in the years that followed. Without a trace. And that's it for how James Cameron was able to make Avatar 2 connect so well with the audiences. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.